That's my dead rat, leave that. <laughs> oh, that's much better. Postman Jim, Postman Jim. <laughs> Good morning guys, welcome to another video today. As promised in the last video, uh, no it wasn't the last video, it was the video before that. We're heading down to Motion Motorsport because we're booked in for one, a baffled sump, and two, we're finally getting the Solid Fab 4 to 1 manifold installed on the car. I've been waiting for this for so long, I was going to give it a go myself, but if one of the head bolts snaps, then I'm pretty much screwed at that. The engine has to come out. I did do the jap speed with my friend Adam uh, on our own, and that took us like eight hours to do because of uh, some of the bolts were being really awkward. I could have probably done it myself, but knowing that I was getting the baffled sump installed, uh, that means the subframe's got to come off and obviously drop the anti-roll bar, stuff like that. So Dave just said, why don't you let me just throw it on once we've got the subframe and everything off the car. So. I thought, you know what, it's probably best, so that's what we're doing. So we're heading down to Motion Motorsport to see Dave and uh, the guys down there. We're getting a drop-in baffled sump fitted, thanks to Tegwa for supplying the baffled sump. It's just a drop-in baffled sump. I'll let Dave explain the difference between the drop-in and the welding and stuff like that. So yeah, that's pretty much the plan. Baffled sump, solid fab 4 to 1. And then once we've got the 4 to 1 on, I think I'm going to wait until after Christmas to get an inlet manifold, take it back to TDI, and uh, then get a little map tweak because obviously the solid fab 4 to 1 is a little bit bigger than the jab speed one I've got on at the minute. So, one, it'll make a better noise. Two, it'll be better airflow, and three, this one's leaking at the minute, so I need to get it off. But anyway, let's uh, head down to Motion Motorsport. Guess who's back? Never mind. Back again. Jesse's back. Tell a friend. I think Dave's going to be proud of me. I'm booked in for 12. And we got here three minutes early. Absolute cause for a celebration again, I think. But I think Andy's here. Um, Johnny and Luca here. Who else we got? Not too sure, but when Dave opens up, then we can uh, crack on. As well, I'm going to point this out before I get slated in the comments for how stupid the car looks. I dropped my um, adjustable wing flap flick thing off um, with revitalized vehicle repairs. If you need any vehicle repairs doing, scratches, dint, stuff like that, then uh, make sure you go check them out. But she's uh she's currently spraying like the wing part so it looks really really weird like it's, it looks pathetic so just thought i'd mention that before anyone says what's happened to your wing so yeah that's what's happened <laughs> let's go see the fellas in the office <laughs> waffle yeah. oh. these kids named it there's a there's a show with the same breed of dog called waffle the wonder dog or someone's had it out oh bless her doing play and Oh, <laughs> bad stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's my dead rat. Leave that. <laughs> All right, mate. You've been well. You? Yeah, good. Good, man. Man. good. good looking chap, Dave. <laughs> So yeah, big thank you to uh, Solid Fab for sending this out for me. Uh, make sure you do go check them out in the description. This thing's absolutely gorgeous, man. Um, I'm not sure on the diameter of it, but I know it's a lot better than the Jack Speed one that we've currently got on. But this thing's so nice, like literally so well put together. And somewhere there should be. Yes. There she is. Uh, I think I'm going to need a gasket for there, or? Yes, you will. Um, do, do take yourself. You can, yes, we do, mate. I mean, right. you can reuse your old one, but I wouldn't recommend it. Why you I don't it? think there's one on it anyway. There's no manifold gasket on it. No. There's got to be. <laughs> mate, it's me we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, better go grab one of them from Tegwood. Yeah, go get one of them, mate. <laughs> sit with them on. This is a good thing about motion. It's literally right next door to Tegus. So when you need something, you literally just come out of that door, go into this door, and let Johnny and Luke take your money. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, so Jim's very kindly going to deliver us the parts. Uh, he's already cracking on. You come here and want me to film, but you're already done by the time I bring the camera out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're obviously having the 4 to 1 by Solid Fab installed and a drop-in drop baffle tump. Yes, 
Is, do you know? Do you know by dropping baffled some? Literally, some off, drop it in. Some I can't. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with a bit more to it, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Dropping thing. Yeah. And then there's uh, sort of like a, a locating gate, if you like, which mm -hmm. wraps around the pickup pipe as you drop the sump on. So essentially, it just creates like a puddle, doesn't it? Like uh, a essentially like a bucket like of like oil. Around yeah. Around the oil pickup pipe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what that means is it's so much easier to fit. You're not going to weld the sump or anything mm -hmm. like that. And if you, for some reason, crack the sump. Yeah. Um, Rather than you going, oh, okay, now I'm going to get another welding baffle. Yeah, you've lost your baffle to somebody as well. So, is there any difference between, uh, someone asked on the comments, we have to ask you actually, okay. is there any difference between a drop in and a welded? Uh, in terms of performance or. Just I mean, in general? The, obviously, ease of fitment uh, mm -hmm. with the yeah. drop in version. Um, it costs you way less to fit it yeah. than the drop in version. <clears throat> Uh, like I say, it's transferable from sump to sump. Yeah, uh, that's true. The clockwise what the design is that good that you don't really see any need for a welding one. And there's gates in the clockwise one, which right. I'll show you in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If we get the sump off, I'll show you exactly how it works yeah. uh, against uh, the, the welding versions. But right. the, the clockwise one's really, really, really good. Right, really sweet. Good. I don't, Happy I days. I never ever fit a welding one over the clockwise one. Right, that just in case kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, sweet. So yeah, obviously this subframe is going to have to uh, be dropped, hence why I've brought it to Dave, because he's done the geo setup on this car, and obviously it needs to go back to how it is now. So once the subframe comes off, I think Dave's going to mark the subframe, and uh, then go from there. Postman Jim, Postman Jim. <laughs> hey up, catch the roll bar. <laughs> there we go, subframe off. And that gives you access to the rest of the engine. I've never seen her like this. Lovely. Lovely. Actually, she's quite clean, isn't she? Yeah, she's not bad at all, mate. For her age. Bless her. <laughs> yeah, she's so, yeah, that's standard. been hitting the bottom of the car. Standard for a jack to be a manifold. Flexes yep. are terrible. Mm -hmm. So it's had a flex to put in it. Obviously, this one's much better. Everything's nice and TIG welded. And you've got your V band here, mm -hmm. which gives you a little bit more of movement to be able to. Right, the, okay. The yeah. B-pipe up and down, stop it knocking on the centre of the car. It's a bigger diameter, isn't it, as yeah, well? It's really, really nice one. Probably. Yeah, got to say, it's a uh, very, very nice bit of kit. Obviously, we've got the brand new gaskets as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what it sounds like. And we've found, well, Dave's found, uh, a pretty deadly leak in the exhaust system. So, all that time I've been moaning about the, uh, the exhaust being too loud and too droney. That's probably why. Um, so hopefully after this the exhaust sounds nice at least. Do you, do you reckon I'll get on a track with the Skunk 2 or not? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Obviously I'm, I'm doing a lot of track days next year as well, well I'm going to try to, so depending on... Yeah. To give you an idea, the Turtle system on the Civic Cup cars the manifold is Touch and go at a 98 day. Right, okay. You can't put a bung in it, it'll fight down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, that's true. I've got a bung for that as well, so we'll see. When they, when they tell me to rev it though, it obviously because it's got the launch controller, it, it's not as loud, so. No, but if you, when you say you go to Donington. Flying past the sensors. Past the drive by one, yeah. It will pick you up. Yeah. And just like that, that brand new oil that I put in, Dave's just <laughs> fucked it. I could have I I kept it in fact. Nah, just don't worry about it. Check, keeping your engine oil and gearbox oil and stuff, even if it's only a few thousand miles old, for me it's just a false economy. If you drain it, it has a Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. What's uh, best oil for these, Dave? Uh, we, uh, we run the, the Motor 540. Never okay. Have a single problem. Um, right, fair enough. That, that's really good. total quartz, that yeah, at the minute. As long as it's correct grade, viscosity. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to run whatever you recommend. You're a decent brand, mate. You won't really have any problems. Right, yeah. sound. Obviously, now with the baffling, you've not got to run the levels of high on track. Yeah. I would always advise you run it slightly over maximum anyway. Yeah, um, always, yeah. But yeah, as long as you've got a decent brand oil in there with a the correct viscosity and grade, you shouldn't really ever have it. Oh, God. Right, I'll get some well, motor stuff then. Motor, right, firstly. sound. Sweet. That's all I need to know. Motor it is. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Is that literally it? Just all the bolts around the uh, around yeah, the sump. A couple of uh, hidden ones underneath your flywheel cover. Right. Those 
Ones there. Yeah, just just bring it to Dave. Don't don't bother doing it on your driveway. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> out she comes. There it is. Eat your dinner out of that. Oh, it's real clean that way. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Good. Really clean. Oh, she does. She does. Uh, yeah, uh, every 5,000 miles I try and do Yeah, you, some of them, mate, are quite, when obviously you don't do an oil change, the oil just stains the yeah, sun, yeah. and you end up spending ages trying to clean it up. But, it's very good. So that's the culprit for so yeah, seizing that, engines then? That's not the problem that seizes your engine. Well, it's that the... Not having any oil in it seizes yeah, your yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is the oil pump pickup pipe. So mm -hmm. This is your oil pump here. Yeah. So the chain is driven through the crank sprocket which is behind there uh -huh. so your engine turns over that turns this chain which turns the pump that sucks oil from there up through there and feeds it to where the oil galleries in the engine got you um, so what you want to try and do essentially is if you look in there if you're on track and you've got an oil pan, pan foil of oil and you turn right yeah all the oil, oil goes going over there over there mm -hmm. and pulls away from this hole here right so what you do with a baffle you encase that pickup pipe mm -hmm. so that the oil can't swill from either side. Got so it stays contained in that collector. Yeah. So the oil pickup pipe's always submerged. So it's always yeah. lubed. You imagine <laughs> if you've got oil that, that swings this way. Yeah, yeah. Comes out the way that pulls up any any, any amount air. of air and you get cavitation in the pump. It doesn't supply any of the bearings in the engine with any oil and then it starts to pick up on the bearing. Just locks the engine. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't lock it as such, but you end up spinning a shell, right, or marking the crank or the bearing, and then that only ever gets worse. And once you start taking material away, yeah, you can never replace it again without replacing the. And that's shell kind of all she wrote, yeah. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, am I right in thinking that the dipstick has to be cut down a little bit? Yes. Yes. I see. I should get a job here, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's coffee time for Dave. Do that, mate. Trying to work out. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. How to make coffee. <laughs> Never ever made a coffee before, so I'm gonna watch this. Even the best oh, cooks have been known to claim <laughs> they can't brew. I made it, Andy didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> you did say no sugars, yeah. Yeah, no sugars. Oh, try that. It's the first ever coffee I've made. I was shitting myself, mate, I'm not gonna lie. It's a spoonful of coffee and water. Yeah, I know. <laughs> see. It's a bit hot. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Andy. <laughs> For those of you that just commented about the uh, manifold gasket, there is one, so you can delete your comments there. There's there was, proof. There was. There was. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm a good mechanic. <laughs> Dave's currently cleaning my bottom end. <laughs> Giving my bottom a clean. <laughs> so yeah, the manifold's uh, pretty much on. Obviously, have got to connect it up there. Uh, unbolt the um, mid part of the back box and kind of try and... So I think we're just going to get a gasket in there, but that looks very, very tasty. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how it sounds now, obviously. I've never actually known what the skunk two system sounds like, because it's always been leaking, or the manifold hasn't been uh, on properly. Me and my mate did the manifold on the driveway, so we, we did our best, but obviously Dave will do a better job. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it all sounds like, and obviously with the baffle jumping as well, Everything's just going to be, it's pretty much bulletproof now. It's just one of them, it's better, it's peace of mind. Some people use them, some people don't. I know people that have uh, got track cars and they've never put a baffle jump in, but I just want to keep that peace of mind that mine's going to be okay. But yeah, Dave's just cleaning the sump, going to slap it back on, put the subframe back on, bolt that up, and uh, then we're all good. Well, it looks so ridiculous without that wing. <laughs> so, sump baffle. Mm -hmm. So these are the gates that I was talking about. Yeah. So what that does is let oil in, but not back, but not no. back through the other way. So it always sits in this collector here. Got so you. where the oil pickup pipe goes through there, mm -hmm. the oil pickup stays in there. The oil can flow in, yeah, but not back out. And right, that keeps oil in this chamber there. So, so it just so keeps it under that pickup there. Basically, like that to give you an idea. Ah, I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, it so sits that snug. So it sits like that. Got you. So then the oil pickup pipe pulls oil from inside this chamber. Yeah. Smart idea, isn't it? Yeah, really, Very smart. really good idea. And then that literally just it literally sits in there. Drops in there nice and tight. 
jingle bells. Jingle bells, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's smart, that. No welding needed, no nothing. Welding needed. Literally, guys, no just in sits in there. We've cleaned all the mating surfaces with yep. scotch right. Dave's gave it all a nice little tidy. Yeah, just because uh, if any of this is dirty, got any oil in it, pitting, yeah. old gasket, it just doesn't seal right. Mm -hmm. Because it's an interference, not an interference, but it's a, an interface fit. There's no gasket as such. The gasket is the silicon. Yeah. Both faces need to be super clean. Got you. So just put all the silicon around Look there. Up. Nice and tidy. Proper job. And that's it. One baffle sump fitted. Okay, so wheels uh, need to go on. Put the oil in, and that's pretty much done. Then Dave's going to uh, check the geo setup, make sure it's uh, back to how it used to be. Uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to do a little walk around of what they've got here down at Motion Motorsport, what they're working on. Um, so obviously we've got mine on the ramp, looking weird without the spoiler. We've got this guy's. Um, apparently, two fellas own this, and they take it to the Nurburgring and stuff, and up to not long back, it was completely standard. Now it's got yellow speed and stuff like that. So. We've got an Audi R8 here, very, very nice. This is like full-fledged track spec in here. ECUs and stuff everywhere. Then we've got this absolutely stunning EG6. This thing's gorgeous. I think I would go for one of these after the EP3. Use this on track for the next year, have some fun in it, and then maybe try and look at one of these. But this is actually B18 supercharged. Oh, I don't know what it is, just looking at this thing, it's gorgeous, like, honestly. So yeah, B18, supercharged, I think it's around 300 horsepower, 280, 300. Fully stripped out in the back here, absolutely gorgeous. Something about these cars, I really, really like them. Obviously got the, I think these are DC5 or DC2 Recaros. Um, I think that's a spoon style uh, spoiler as well. Carbon boot, carbon bonnet something about the EGs. Then we've got the uh, BMW here, we've got the Clio, another BMW. This is a Civic Cup car, trophy car. Um, these have to run 215 horsepower and then the engines get like capped off at that so they know no one's cheating. A lot of camber on that front wheel there but yeah this thing's pretty cool this is actually a Golf GTI that they've just uh, just had all the cage welded in and uh, that's looking very very nice. Uh, so yeah, that, you won't believe it, but that's a that is a Golf GTI, and this is the um, this was the turbo Civic that they did the um, like testing with the Tegra Turbo Kit. So this was that car. It's now got a K20 in it. Um, but quick story: when they did the turbo build on that one, they had to go to Spa, so they took the K20 out of that Civic and then put it in the NSX. Now, they've recently took the engine back out the NSX, put it into that Civic, and is now a very, very tasty K24 in this NSX. Now, Jesse mapped this the other day, and I think it made like 304 horsepower, naturally aspirated. It's still got more to go, but Dave was saying it's quite tight in the engine base, so they've got to do some modifications to get it to work, but this thing's absolutely insane, man, like never seen anything like it. If anyone's actually seen an NSX on the road, then I don't know where you live because I never have. This is the only one I've ever seen and Johnny's got two of them. So, yeah, this thing is so sick. 304 horsepower, man. Very, very cool. But yeah, just thought I'd show you around what's, uh, what's going on here at Motion Motorsport while Dave's just finishing off the Civic. <laughs> so the subframe is back on, all bolted up. Uh, and the solid fab 4 to 1 is also on. looking very nice up there. Definitely looking forward to what this sounds like. We've got that O2 sensor and then the, um, the bung for the other O2 sensor. Dave's very kindly put a new gasket in here so that won't leak anymore. So it should actually sound like a skunk 2 is meant to sound instead of leaking all over the place. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what that thing sounds like properly now. Um, but yeah, after that, that's the, that's pretty much the exhaust done. I'll see what I can do about getting the Skunk 2 on track. If I do have any, any issues getting on track, then I'll just have to change the exhaust system. But hopefully we'll be okay, because it does sound quite nice when it's uh, full track. Well, I'm hoping it does anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've had that dipstick on there 13 years. Dave just... No, no, no thought went into it. Just cut it straight off and somewhere down here. But yeah. Plenty of thought went into it. Plenty of thought. <laughs> so yeah, obviously you have to cut the bottom of the dipstick because the backwards sum is now in there. Um, and it does just hit. So 
he's just chopped a little bit off and uh, sits nice in there again. So Dave's just uh, filled her up with some good, good Motul 5W40, just tightening the uh, manifold bolts now. And then, are we, are we giving her a start? It will be, mate, yeah. Gonna see what she sounds like, finally, with no leaks. <laughs> And the light's gone off now. Then yeah. plug the injectors back in. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that sounds a lot better, man. Yeah. Uh, turn it off, let the oil settle while we torque the wheels. Yeah. And check that your oil level's correct. Oh, he's a professional, Dave. <laughs> Yes, finally no leaks. Right, so like an absolute legend, Dave sorted out of my airbox. Previous owner put that big massive bracket up there on it for some reason. But none of the bits. Yeah, but none of the actual bits that come with the, the Tegwa. Um, Tegwa, huge thank you to Tegwa for sorting me out the, uh, they've sorted me out the uh, heat shield. Uh, Dave sort of found a bracket somewhere out of somewhere else. Um, gave the, in, uh, the intake a little clean as well so it's all gonna fit flush now instead of looking all bodged so big thank you to the boys <laughs> okay so I literally just got back I went to get a new uh, gas can for Dave did him a little favor and uh, it's all done everything's uh, everything's all sorted Ge geo setups all back to normal solid fabs on and the baffle tump is in so let's go take it for a drive Legend. once again Thanks appreciate it that, man mate. she's gonna be a beast <laughs> I love coming here <laughs> Let's have, have a look at. I have lot these. Right, no worries, I'll do it when I get home. Oh, mate, that's much better. Oh, that's tidy, isn't it? How it's meant to be. Oh, perfect, man. Because that bracket was already there, yeah. rather than leave any holes yeah. in the scuttle and the airbox, mm -hmm. what I've done is just keep it there. Yeah, because, sound. To be honest, it actually is no bad thing trying to help it stay there. Well, the yeah, true. Um, but now you've got the proper bracket here. Oh, you've tucked all that up there. Oh, look at oh, you! Yeah. <laughs> and then obviously that little bracket that we made up earlier. Yeah. To hold the, the heat shield, shield and everything now. Um, and then trimmed you. Oh, perfect. The seal as well, so that's not wanking around on there. What a legend. All good, man. Perfect, mate. Thank you. Good to go. Oil level, I've checked. That's bang on. That's bang uh, on. Yeah, so enjoy it, man. Thank you very much. Oh, so a couple of people did notice the engine making this like little like tapping kind of noise uh, on the video where I was at AC Alloys. It stopped doing it now. All it was is a spark plug cover. It's completely stopped it. Dave is an absolute legend, man. Oh, perfect. Back to normal. <laughs> Okay, so just got back. It was like stupidly busy on the motorway, about an hour drive back. Uh, I just want to say the car sounds amazing. I'm not sure what it's going to be like on track, getting on track with this exhaust, but that regardless, the exhaust sounds amazing. Obviously, the baffled sump's doing its bit. And I just want to say a big, big thank you to uh, Dave and everyone at Motion Motorsport and every single person at Tegua. Everyone in that building. Honestly, you guys are so good to me, always helping me out when I'm stuck. Dave, I don't know what I'd do without you, mate. Honestly, you're an absolute legend. I, pl I, I just want you guys to please just go down below, drop Tegwa a follow, and drop Motion Motorsport a follow, and just so, show some appreciation with, by dropping them a follow, because seriously, they've, they've, uh, they've helped me from the get-go. They really have. They didn't have to, and they just, they've all just done it out of the kindness of the heart. So, yeah, big thank you to Dave, especially Johnny, Luke, everyone at Tegwa. Jim, also, of course. Everyone at Tegwa, thank you very much, boys. It really does mean a lot. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. We're fully ready for track now. Um, I'm going to go in now and try and uh, book some, look at the dates for all the track days and stuff like that and uh, take the old girl on track. Um, I, yeah, once again, I know. Thank you so much to Dave and everyone at Motion Motorsport and Tegwa. really does mean a lot. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.